Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Costin. In today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at not only history or multiple undo in Photoshop, but also the history panel, working with snapshots, and the history brush. So let's start by talking about history. Now what I'll do is I'll just grab something like, let's start with the healing brush. So I tap the J key and I'll just hold down the option key to set my sample point. And I can go ahead and remove that spot. And I think we all know that underneath the edit menu, you can choose to undo the last thing you've done and redo it. And that's a very easy toggle with keyboard shortcuts. Basically it's command Z and then you do it again and it undoes and redoes. So on windows that'd be control Z. But what if you do more than one thing? What if I come over here and I decide I want to get rid of that spot and that spot and that spot and we just keep going along. Now if I do command Z, all it does is it just backs up that one step. But you can see here under the edit menu that not only do I have the undo, I have the step backwards command. And the keyboard shortcuts are actually listed right next to the commands. And you can see that by either adding the command key here with the option key or the command key with the shift key, so that'd be control alt or control shift on Windows, we can go back and forward in time. Well, if you want to get a visual representation of what that looks like, we can look at the history panel. Now, I don't know if your history panel is showing or not, so you just need to go to Window and select History. I can see mine's right here. And in fact, to make it more obvious, let's go ahead and just pull that out and I'll dock it with the other ones, but it will have its own space. Okay, so we can see on the history panel, at the top we have something called a snapshot, which I'll talk more about later. We have the open state, which is when I first open the file. And then we have these states where I've used the healing brush. So Command Z toggles undo and redo. If I do Command Option, then we can go back in time, which is Command Option Z or Command Shift Z, we can go back forward in time. So that's basically how the history panel works. Now, if I do a lot of things, if I keep coming in here and retouching and removing kind of these spot areas, you'll notice that what happens over time, oh, that's not going to look very good. Let's actually switch now from the healing brush to the stamp tool. And I'm actually going to just stamp that right there. I think we can get that a little closer. Okay. Oops, and now I need to retouch that. We can come down here, but you can see now we can see not only do I have the healing brush, I have the clone stamp tool states. But if I just keep going and I keep adding more and more states, in fact, let me just come over here so I can do this kind of sloppily. If I just add more and more states, what eventually happens is the state at the top rolls off because it happened so long ago. And where this is controlled is actually in your preferences. So underneath the edit menu, if you're on Windows, you can go to the Photoshop preferences. Otherwise on Mac, we go to the Photoshop menu and then preferences. And then we'll come down here to performance. Now I know it might seem a little odd that the number of states you can have in history is set in the performance preference, but we can see right here, history states, it's set to 20. So after I do 20 things, the top state will roll off. The reason it's under performance is because the amount of history that you're keeping track of can actually have an effect on performance. So for example, I mean, I can increase the history states. I can go up to 100 history states, in which case I'm telling Photoshop that I need it to keep track of the last 100 things that I do. Well, you can imagine, Depending on what you're doing, that's a lot of information for Photoshop to hang on to. Now, Photoshop Smart, what it does is it divides up your canvas or your photograph into tiles. And you can see right here that it's got the tiles set. And But basically, that's, that's probably more information than you need to know. What you need to know is that when you're doing something like using the clone stamp tool in a small area, you're probably only affecting one or two tiles. If you were running a filter over the entire image, then you would be affecting all of the tiles. That's a ton of information to keep track of. So although you might think that you want as many states in history so that you have the most flexible workflow ever, there really is kind of a performance and there could be a penalty um, if you set this up too high. So I'm going to take that back down to 20. All right, let's click OK. So we've seen the states rolling off the top. Well, is there a way to prevent that besides setting the number of history states up? 
You know, you can delete states, but watch what happens if I try to drag like this healing brush state into the trash. It'll just delete that one. That's great because that was at the top. But now I'm going to go to the clone stamp state and I'm going to drag that one to the trash. And did you notice it didn't just delete that state, it deleted all of those other states before that. So let's undo that. See how it just deleted all of those healing brush states. So that's just the way that it works. You can't like, you can't just steal like one state out of the middle and, and take it away. It, it just doesn't work that way. Although there is some additional flexibility and you find that underneath the flyout menu right here for history options. See this option right here, this allow nonlinear history? If I turn that on and click OK, and now I want to delete the clone stamp state, and I bring it to the trash, it did only delete that state. But here's the thing, it's, it's history, it's not magic. So we took one history state out, but if you think of each state as just being a point in time, we took out a point in time, but we didn't change the rest of history. Meaning that, yes, we took out the state that said healing brush, but there was no effect on the image. We're still in this current state. So that history brush still made its mark. We didn't remove that mark. If that's the kind of thing that you're after, what you really want to be doing is using multiple layers, um, it might be easier with this example. Let's say, for example, you're trying to use the um, healing brush on a separate layer. Well, then if you've made a mistake, you can throw away that layer and you still have your original. In history, certainly you can go back in time, but you just can't remove like certain things that you've done at a certain state in history. You can click on any state to go back to the state, but you can't just be magical and take away like things that you've done 10 minutes ago, but leave things that you've done five minutes ago. It just doesn't work that way. All right. So the other thing that the nonlinear history does allow you to do though, is I can go back in time to say this point in time and without the nonlinear history, if I did something else, like if I got my paintbrush and started painting, without linear history, all of this would disappear. In fact, let me just show you what it looks like. We'll go to history options, turn that off, and when I go back in time, it would say, okay, well, I'm gonna get rid of all these states. If you don't want that, turn back on your history option. Allow your nonlinear history. And now, when I paint with a brush, you can see that it just added that state to the bottom of all the different history states. Okay. If I get to a point where I do like my document, because this is a really important safety tip, if you close this document, you'll lose all your history. You also lose snapshots, but we'll talk about those in a minute. So it's really important to know that these are temporary. If you close the file, they go away. So if I get to a point in time and I really like this and I don't want this state to go away, what I would do is I would probably save this state out to a new document. Okay, so at any point in time, in fact, if I wanted to go back in time and say, no, I like the document in this state, I would just click on that state and then look right down here at the bottom of the history panel, there's an option to click on that will actually create a new document. So we have the document that we were working on and now we have the document that we just created at that healing brush state. All right, I don't really want that. So let's go ahead and close that and I don't need to save that. Okay, so let's go ahead and just clean this up just a wee bit more. I'm just going to grab my healing brush again. That's just tapping the J key. And let's just get rid of some of these kind of more offensive spots around here because I want these to be gone before we turn to the next subject, which is going to be snapshots. So coming back down here and oh, look, I went back in time and then now I have to fix that again. All right, so let's move to the stamp tool to do that and we'll just clone over that and hopefully that looks good enough for what we're doing right now. Okay, so oh, there's a few more down here. Turning back to Jay, Jay's my healing brush. The reason that I picked um, the healing brush is because I want it to automatically kind of fix uh, the tonality. And I also, I like it to be aligned to the sample so that as I move my, my brush around those, the, the place where I'm grabbing the information from is also moved. Okay, for right now, um, since this tutorial is not about the history brush, let's move on and we'll just say that that's good enough and we'll hide that part down there. Okay, so we've, we've made a lot of history and those states were rolling off the top. 
but there is another way to keep them from rolling off the top and besides you know adding more history states or saving out to a new document and that is by creating a snapshot and there's a little camera icon at the bottom of the history panel you can use that to save out a snapshot or you can use the flyout menu right here to create a new snapshot now when you're creating new snapshots you want to be careful what you're creating the snapshot of right so basically we're kind of like taking a picture of the whole state of the image right now and you can choose whether or not you want to look at the full document so each individual layer or you can take a snapshot of a merged layer so I'm going to go ahead and do the merged layer and we're just going to call this um, the artichoke okay so this snapshot now appears in my history panel and we can move back and forth between snapshots so here's my current snapshot here's the snapshot when I brought the image in or when I opened it now you're thinking you didn't see me take a snapshot when I opened the document no you didn't because if we go back here to my history options you'll notice that Photoshop has turned on by default the automatically create first snapshot why do we do that well for a number of reasons um, one, it gives you a place that you can just click to go back to, to return to. And I know you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, if I want to go back to the state when I first open the document, why wouldn't I just revert the document or close the document and reopen the document? Well, because depending on how much RAM you have and how much you've done to your image, it might actually be quite faster to just click on that initial snapshot because all of that information might be held in RAM. So that might be an advantage to automatically creating a first snapshot. The other thing is, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I have opened files before, made a bunch of changes, and I have wanted to do a save as, like I, I should have done a save as to save it as a different document, but I didn't. I did a save, and so I saved over my original. Well, if you realize what you've done in time, you can quickly just go back, click on that initial snapshot that you took when the, the document was first open, do another save, and then come forward in time to your current state in history and do your save as. So this initial snapshot is a great way to kind of correct an accidental save. When you needed that original file and you wanted to create a save as, but you forget and you actually do a save, saving over your original. So, I mean, can you imagine? I've done that with, you know, back in the day when we were scanning, you've got a 200 meg file, you, resize it down you do all these changes and then you do a save oh you never want to save over that original so this has really saved me in the past now with that said here's one caveat if you are doing actions like if you have this workflow where you're using actions all the time to process like 500 files and you want everything done really quickly you might actually want to turn this off because it does take up space it takes up ram and so to get the quickest run of an action you might want to turn this off okay you also have an option to automatically create a new snapshot when saving that's up to you i'm okay with that off um, i like the non-linear history so i'm going to leave that on show the new snapshot dialog by default um, i do like that because i like to be able to pick what i want to take a snapshot of I, if I want to just take a snapshot of the, um, the full document or just of the merge layers and then make layer visibility changes undoable. This is kind of interesting because sometimes when you're on the layers panel and you click on the eye icon next to the layer to toggle it on and off, some people want that to actually be an undoable state, meaning that they can use command or control Z to undo and redo that state. If you want that, go ahead and turn this on. All right. So the snapshot that it created, that's the initial snapshot. This is the snapshot that we just created. And what I like about the snapshots is that if you put your document into different states, like if you're moving through time and, and you go, oh, I kind of like my document at, at this point in time, you can take a snapshot of it and then go in a completely different direction, knowing that you can get back to this state in time because it's a snapshot. Now, I realize that that a lot of you already know layers and you understand masking in Photoshop. And so you're using multiple layers to maybe, um, you know, show part of one image and part of another image, which is great. It's probably the most flexible way to do it, but not everyone thinks like that or wants to work like that. There's a lot of artists that, that are much more free form that just would love to be able to have like three photos and just paint in between them. 
They don't want to deal with multiple layers or masking. They don't care about, you know, making it be repeatable. They just want to kind of freeform feel and paint from multiple sources. That's when snapshots are perfect because they can be used with a history brush. So let's just create a few states here with this image. Um, I'm not sure exactly what else we want to do, but let's let's just go ahead and, and try a fill. All right, so I'm going to do an edit fill. And you know, I happen to have this other pattern that I already created. This is kind of this outline of the artichoke. And I'm going to fill this entire image with this pattern. Now, I don't really like the way it filled there. So let's do a um, Command or Control T, only this is a background. So we need to make it into a layer first. So I'll just Option, double click the word background. It's an Alt key on Windows. And what I did there is I just prevented that dialog box from coming up so that I didn't have to rename it or anything. But now that will allow me to free transform this. So we'll just make these little artichokes a little bigger. This is actually something I did with the art history brush that I'll be demonstrating in a movie in the future. But isn't it kind of weird? I did something in the future. Now I'm taking it into the past and we're talking about history. Hmm, coincidence? OK, so let's move on and do something else. Before I make other changes, I think I like the state like this. So let's make a snapshot. So I click New Snapshot. I'm going to take it of just the merged layers. This is going to be kind of my graphic snapshot. Click OK. Now let's go back to the artichoke state and let's go ahead and transform this. So I'll do a Command or Control T to free transform it. And this time, I want to make this really, really large because this is just going to be kind of a backgroundy element of just kind of the patterns of the leaves and hit return or enter. All right, and we'll make another snapshot of this. So new snapshot, merge layers, and we'll call this transformed. OK. So you can see now that I have these three different states. And let's zoom in. I've got the artichoke state or snapshot. I've got the graphic snapshot and the transform snapshot. So we can start at any point in time. But this is what I'm talking about, about kind of having these three, I think of these snapshots as, as little photographs, right? They're not layers. They're not on my layers panel. They're just three different states that the image was in. So I can go and use my history brush. Now where is that? That's located right here. We've got a history brush and an art history brush. We'll start with just the history brush. And I want to get a large brush here, so let's just make that big. And maybe I want to paint in some of the information that's on the graphic snapshot. So I just click to the left of the icon here, this little empty well. That's where I set the state to sample from. And don't get me wrong, I can sample from the snapshot. I can also sample from a state in history. But be careful, because if you're sampling from a state in history, you know, these are kind of temporary. You do a bunch of stuff and then you sample from another state. It, the first state might have rolled off the top. So that's why it's just better practice to make them into snapshots because these don't roll off the top. You can make as many snapshots as you want. Whoops, I didn't mean to click on that. OK, so I'm on the artichoke state or I went back to that snapshot. But I'm going to paint from the graphic. So now anywhere that I paint, you can see, I can paint that in, right? And if I paint in too much, I could just go back and set my sample from the artichoke and start painting that out. All right? Or if I want to come down here, I can sample from the larger leaves and start painting that in. And of course, you can change, you know, you could change the any brush parameter or anything. I just changed the opacity there to kind of bring back some of the opacity. Likewise, we can come back to the graphic and set my sample point there if I don't want this so opaque, and I can paint that in and paint that out. If I want a little bit of the graphic over the center, we can do that. If I, whoop, OK, now I accidentally clicked on the actual state. I don't want that. So I'm going to go back to my current state, which is at the bottom of the history panel, and just set my sample to the artichoke. And maybe I want to kind of darken down the edges down here. I can go ahead and paint that in, and maybe paint that in over there, and just kind of bring in a little bit of a vignette. And you see that I'm getting that just from this state right here, which is quite dark. And I can bring that in a little bit more and kind of hide some of those icons if I want to. And again, I can just keep going back and forth until I find the exact correct mix. So for some folks, this is just a, a much easier 
and a much more kind of intuitive way to blend images together. You don't have to know about layers, you don't have to know about masking, all you have to do is take these snapshots at these different points in time. So I think that the, the snapshots and the history panel can be used with the history brush as, as quite a creative tool. And then one just last thing before I leave, you should also know that you can fill with history. So let's just go back in time. In fact, let's make a snapshot because I don't want to lose this state right here. So we'll call this the composite state. And we'll just take that of the merge layers, although there's only one layer. Let's go back in time to, um, to this state where it was the artichoke. If I realize now at this point in time, oh my goodness, I've done something wrong to part of the image, but not the whole image, right? So I don't want to go all the way back to when I opened it. But let's say, for example, maybe this piece of greenery over here, this area right here, maybe that's super important to the art director for some reason, right? So let's go back to this artichoke state right here. This is the retouch state. And let's say, I don't know where that green area is, maybe it's right around here. So I make a selection around that green area that I want to bring back. And then I need to make sure that I set my history brush to where I want to sample from. So not the graphic state, but the actual open state. And then I'll choose Edit, Fill, and we can fill this with history, and it would bring back that green from that original state. So it can really kind of save you. I know that's kind of a lame example, but it can save you if you've been retouching in one area and then you move to another area. If you move back to the area you've been retouching and maybe it's too heavily retouched or you want to just start over in that one area, instead of reverting the image back, you can just fill that small area with the original state and then go in and correct it. Well, excellent. That wraps up this episode. My name's Julianne Cost. I hope you'll join me again on another episode of The Complete Picture.